The Queen has opened up about her own private battle with COVID-19 in February for the first time as she admitted it has left her very tired and exhausted and it was very hard as she couldn't see her family. Good morning, Your Majesty. Good morning, Your Majesty. Delighted to be here today. This, this particular bit where you're standing, this, this was specially built, was it, for the... Yes. For the yeah. yes. pandemic? So this, so this unit was built um, in five weeks, ma'am. Um, mm -hmm. Normally a project like this would take at least five months. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it, what, what can be done when, when need, <laughs> needs be. Yes, yes. it is. You, you're the record builders, are you? You had to build it <laughs> yes. so, yes. so quickly. And at peak, we had, uh, through, through Paul's team uh, on site, we had 650 men working seven days a week Good three gracious. shifts, 24 hours a day. So my name's Asif. Me and my family, we contracted COVID towards the end of December. I saw the brilliant work, the nurses, the doctors, the whole team here, they were doing. They supported me and my family in a fantastic way. I'm better now. I'm getting there. I'm recovering. I'm much better. I mean, I've recently left the wheelchair, so I'm walking about now. I'm glad that you're getting better and you... And it, it does leave one very tired and exhausted, doesn't it, this horrible yeah. pan mm. pandemic. And in your time, it was the bad, bad version, wasn't it? During a virtual visit to the Royal London Hospital last week, Her Majesty shed some more light on what her experience had been like, even agreeing with another patient that having COVID was very frightening. The Monarch's online visit was held to mark the opening of the Queen Elizabeth unit at the Royal London Hospital, where she is patron, talking to staff and one former patient. During a video call with workers and medical staff, the Queen listened to their stories of coping with the huge influx of COVID patients and was told by one senior nurse, We held their hands, we wiped their tears, we provided comfort. The Queen Elizabeth Unit, a 155-bed hospital built in five weeks instead of five months to satisfy demand, treated around 800 individuals from North East London. And the Queen praised the Dunkirk spirit on show during that time. Speaking to former COVID patient Asef Hussain and his wife Shamina, the Queen said about the virus, I'm glad you're getting better. It does leave one very tired and exhausted, doesn't it? This horrible pandemic, it's not a nice result. During the Queen's video chat, the subject of family and friends, being unable to visit loved ones, being treated in hospital during the peak of the pandemic was mentioned several times, and the monarch concurred at one point. Of course, not being able to see your relative was very hard. Polly Fitch, a clinical psychologist who ran a family support team at the hospital, told the Queen how information was put beside patients' beds so medical staff knew their backgrounds. And Iman Farooq Siddiqui, a chaplain who is part of the hospital's multi-faith team, said his presence was viewed with a sense of hope by families. Her Majesty said to the Iman, It was obviously a very frightening experience to have COVID very badly wasn't it? At the end of the call, the Queen chatted to the construction team who created the unit on the hospital's 14th and 15th floors in quick time and told them, it is very interesting, isn't it? When there is some very vital thing, how everybody works together and pulls together, marvellous, isn't it? When the team hailed the Dunkirk spirit that inspired them, the monarch replied, Oh, thank goodness, it still exists. The 95-year-old monarch, who contracted the virus in February when Buckingham Palace announced the Queen had tested positive in Windsor, it was said she had mild cold-like symptoms. While she had her weekly audience with the Prime Minister, she did not appear on scheduled video calls. Sources say the cancellations were made because she sounded croaky and full of cold and not because her condition had worsened. She also pulled out of the annual Commonwealth Day service, a bait more due to mobility problems. The Queen, who is triple jabbed and likely to have her second booster injection any time now, is suffering from after effects, including extreme exhaustion, like many who have contracted Covid.
This will surely add to her recent health issues, which put her in hospital last autumn and unable to conduct an engagement outside palace walls for six months. The Queen notably missed the Commonwealth Day service on Monday, March the 14th, which was attended in her absence by the Prince of Wales, the Duchess of Cornwall and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. The monarch had previously been given rest orders by doctors even before catching COVID and had been forced to cancel a two-day trip to Northern Ireland on October the 20th at the last minute. Other affected events before Christmas included the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow on November the 1st, for which the Queen recorded a video message, the Festival of Remembrance at the Royal Albert Hall on November the 10th and the National Service of Remembrance on November the 14th. She was finally seen in public at the Duke of Edinburgh's service of Thanksgiving at the end of last month. While she has also pulled out of this week's Maundy service in Windsor for the first time ever due to her mobility and handed responsibility to the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, she has stoically continued video calls and audiences. Four key events are said to be considered as priorities for the Queen to attend in person. The Express reports, including the state opening of Parliament in May, the Derby at Epsom, the Trooping of the Colour in June and a special service at St Paul's Cathedral that same month to mark her Platinum Jubilee.